Hello everybody and thanks for joining us on the Creative Corner and joining me today is Dr. John Warlow. G'day John, how are you? Well thank you, thanks for I'm glad to be here. Thanks for joining me. Uh, you've written a book called The Cure for Life, in fact you've written, well how about you tell us, what is The Cure for Life? So The Cure for Life has now actually become two books and the first book is The Cure for Life, God-Centred Transformation. The second book is The Cure for Life, God-Centred Relationships. The first book is divided into two, the, and it's a picture language, and the first set of pictures is actually a series of steps on how to change, how to be transformed. The second part is to do with a series of shapes, nearly how to be reshaped into, uh, uh, into a better way of living. Very, very clear. What's been the most difficult part of bringing this together? So the most difficult part has been actually to simplify fairly complex ideas and concepts which are to do with life transformation. To simplify those so that anyone can really use them and actually make them into a picture language which can be understood and talked about in a cafe, in the family home, with friends. You don't need a PowerPoint to actually talk about these very powerful concepts for change. I think that's uh, a very good point because when you're writing something that has a, has a focus like your books do, you need to ensure that the, um, the ease of reading is there, that anybody can pick up the book and, and get a handle on what you're saying. And I remember when I started reading it uh, in the review stage, that was the question I asked myself, is could, could I understand this from a layman's viewpoint? Now, you mentioned before that it's a set, and initially it wasn't, it was one book. Can you explain to me how it's broken out into two? What are the, what are the fundamental differences and why have we done this? Well, the actual process was the book started to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's like suddenly I found I was actually having twins. <laughs> I like that. And uh, it was quite easily easy to divide. The Cure. The Cure is an acronym. The Cure indeed is an, acro an, an acronym and it's basically is the way of how people change. So the clue of how to change is actually in the title. I think we're going to leave that up to the readers to go and get a copy of this book so they can dig into that because I know what I want to ask next but we'll move on. Let's talk about you for a minute John. Oh actually no, tell us what do you want people to take out of this. So, Okay, so what I want people to take out of is that they, anyone can change and they can change in a very holistic way, spiritually, personally, and socially. That they can have a greater sense of connection, belonging, and influence. And as well as that, they can move more into a place of God-centered flourishing. And finally, they don't have to do that alone. So you're a doctor? Yes, I'm a doctor. What are you a doctor of? I'm a specialist in psychiatry, adult, child and family psychiatry, but also I do coaching as well as consulting. Okay, um, I had a joke then, but I won't play it. What, how does the, um, your career as a psychiatrist, how does that tie into, into the books? How does, how does it fit? It ties in really well and it was quite formative. Firstly, when I was having to do my exam to become a psychiatrist, and only around 20% of us doctors passed first time in New Zealand when we took this exam. It's not as if we were dumbwits, but uh, a lot of us failed. Mercifully, I passed. Many people were surprised, understandably, that I passed. And the reason I passed was I was able, just in time, to actually get these complex, abstract ideas about how people tick and work in a holistic way into something which I could actually see, a picture. And that first picture was a picture of the person in a holistic perspective and how they can change and why they might sink and flounder, but also why they might flourish. And it was finding that which slip slipstreamed me or gave me the ladder instead of the snake in order to be able to pass this exam. Much, much to the shock of many of my colleagues, I passed. <laughs> That is fascinating. <laughs> so incorporating that into the book, you've actually used that same sort of theory and, and, and adapted 
you're writing to? So indeed, so I've taken what I learned there, but not just there, but also in my own personal life. So it was in the desperation of getting through the exam, which was a precipitant, but also as the first book shows, I didn't start off my life in a pretty place. I was very much alone, hardly had a mum and a dad, was brought up by a nanny, then went to a boarding school, not a good place to start off with life. So I think it's also out of that experience which I bring to bear in the book and my desperation really to make, to take what is in the hands of experts like psychiatrists and make it available for anyone. Someone put it like this, they work with orphans in China. They use this material for them. They said this, John, what you do is you take it out of the hands of experts and put it into the heart of people. That's been the most challenging experience and those who know me know that it's really hard for me to keep it simple. Well, I, I, I have had your family communicate this message to me and, and I've certainly seen it myself, which is to openly recognise the achievements that you've got through, you know, what you've been bringing to the table in your, in your work uh, and now through your creating of published material. And it is amazing and it is a legacy. And if you can influence and impact orphans in China, of all places, mate, that is a huge accomplishment. So I congratulate you for that. That's fantastic. God-centered transformation, God-centered relationships. Clearly there is a Christian association. Is the series available for the layman? Can anyone pick up this material and get it? Anyone can pick up particularly book one and get it. How do I know that? Because I relate with a lot of people who don't have an active or overt faith. It is not hard to do that. People can take the book, the steps and the shapes, which apply to anyone. Because both you and I, we have a body, we have a mind, we have a heart. Some have got more of a spiritual activity, others not so. So people can leave that aside. It's quite possible to do that and still learn in a holistic way about how people change and grow. So let's talk a little bit a little bit about faith, belief, and way of life. See, when we started this journey of bringing these books to life, and I knew you know your background, I knew where you worked, I knew what you spent a lot of time doing. I saw a faith-based man, and then as time went on, I saw that it was also a very strong belief in humanity. I really saw that clearly in our discussions. Sitting here right now, listening to you, I see that the books and what you're trying to deliver here is a way of life. Would that be a fair assumption? It's absolutely a way of life which should be able to affect us in any situation we're in. At family, in the family, with friends, at school, so it can be used by kids and teenagers, um, or if we're teachers, in the church setting, and also in our work setting yeah. as well. Wherever that is, it is surprising how transferable and transportable these steps and shapes are so that anyone can actually start to get a greater grasp of themselves as a person, not just in the form of self-help, but also then with whoever they are, use that picture language to help others. I made this comment yesterday to a client where I said, you know, personal development is something that's, oh, roll your eyes at personal development, we hear it all the time. Uh, and it, it intrigues me because I think if you're given information that can help you as a person, help you as a human being, why wouldn't you take it on? Um, and, and I like what you've said there about how the shapes can be incorporated into everyday life and every situation. And, and I know about them and I can see how that applies. I'm very grateful for the very fact that I found these steps and shapes but then in relationship with others, we've developed them over 25 years. So now they're really ready to deliver. They're like a good, mature Australian red, <laughs> or a great Kiwi white. That's what we needed to hear, John. <laughs> That's what we needed to hear. Okay, look, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. It's really been good to catch up. Yeah. 
Ocean, many thanks. It's just such a privilege and frankly so easy to work with you, Superman. <laughs> awesome, that's so cool. Now you guys, you, you've got to watch this guy. There's going to be a lot about him over, over the internet over the coming months and years to come. Go and check out drjohnwarlow.com and also livingwholeness.org. The book's going to be available on both of those sites. So go and check it out. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.